These pieces are from the wardrobe of Professor Lalaji Baum. These ensembles are new additions to the collection. So they came in through the Africa Fashion Exhibition Call Out, which launched in January 2021. And Lalaji got in touch because she had some pieces in her own wardrobe. Lalaji Baum was born in Surrey in 1927, and she was an adult education specialist she worked at universities in Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia and Uganda between 1949 and 1981. So this ensemble is a key part of her wardrobe. She bought it in Dakar in 1966 from a local tailor to wear to the second International Congress of Africanists. Um, there are a number of events around that, including the opening party hosted by the Senegalese president, Leopold Senghor. So this is a grand boubou, which refers to the shape and the volume of the piece. The grand references the fact that it's particularly large in style and it is a rectangle that has been folded over and then the neck has been cut in the top. So there's no seam up here, which is very clever. And then it's almost completely open at the sides for your arms with then a small amount stitched at the bottom just to keep it together. So you can imagine when you wear it, it would flow really nicely and um, you might have to be careful though of it slipping kind of alluringly off, off the shoulder. It's really been brought to life by the use of fabric. So this extremely sheer synthetic green organza, which gives the most amazing shimmer and would be extremely fluid when you're walking around. You can just imagine it wafting as Lalaji went into the events. And then it's elevated or lifted with the embroidery on it. So it's covered in machine embroidered flowers. And the fact that they're machine embroidered, I think really gives this sense of a spectacle. So you're meant to see it from far away. You're not necessarily meant to stare at the detail as we are here, because you can see when you do, it's quite rough and ready. So you're really meant to see it from far away rather than looking at the intricacy of it. But then they've done this really clever placement where you get these different colors just to add another level of complexity to it. So underneath you have a peplum top, which is really nipped in at the waist and gives a really um, figure-hugging silhouette. And then that's on top of the pannier or the wrap skirt, which is quite tight fitting in style, but then actually will have some fluidity because it's wrapped. And so that gives you some movement. Wearing this, I think Lalaji would have felt like she was making an impression, but I think she also wanted to just really fit in and wear what everyone else was wearing. So you have the most amazing photographs of women in these organza grand boo-boos looking incredibly stylish. So this is really peak fashion um, in 1966 Dakar. So this piece of cloth is for their head tie. It's made in the same fabric as the Grand Boo Boo. So it's very clever because it's just a rectangle of fabric, which then you would tie around your hair um, in different styles. So depending on how you felt on the day, you could go for something very simple, easy to wear, or you'd go for something that was very large, had a lot of volume and was really quite elaborate. What's really exciting about Lalaji's wardrobe is you get examples of fashion from across the continent from the late 1940s to the 1990s. So these two pieces, this one comes from Dakar, from Senegal, and the other piece comes from Lagos in Nigeria. This dress was designed for Lalaji Baun by Shade Thomas Farm, often referred to as Nigeria's first fashion designer. Shade moved to London to study at Central St. Martin's, then St. Martin's School of Art, but moved back to Nigeria in 1960, the year of independence, to set up her boutique. Lalaji lived in Nigeria when she worked at the universities, and when she was there, she regularly went to Shade's shop and she purchased quite a few pieces, of which this ensemble is one. It was designed for her in 1977 to wear, to receive her OBE at Buckingham Palace. So it's an example of Chalet's made to measure, made to order lines. The piece is made from a heavy red velvet, which was chosen specifically by the designer for Lalaji because she knew it was gonna be worn in London. And Chalet had studied at St. Martin's 
when she was in London in the 50s and so she remembered the cold English weather and so adapted her usual material choice to suit the needs of the client. So it's made with a bold red colour and you have this incredible block of that at the front so you definitely would be noticed and then it's heavily embellished with embroidery around the neckline, on the arms and also on the hem. So these are loops of embroidery that are done in chain stitch just repeating all the way around and it's incredibly cleverly done. It creates a really heavy sleeve because there's so much of it. And here you get this lovely metallic thread running throughout, which gives it such a sparkle. So the headpiece is really clever and it's one of Sade's innovations, this idea of a pre-tied gelée. So a gelée is a flat rectangular piece of cloth that you then tie around the head in different styles. But here she's mimicked the tying with these lengths of cloth, but then stitched it down. So actually you just take it on and off like a hat. The back of the design is very similar to the front. So it's got this panel of block color and in the deep red velvet, and then you've got embroidery at the neck, on the arms and on the base. But what's really one of my favorite features is the zip, because although it's quite simple, it speaks really to Shadow's mission of making fashion which works for women who are on the go, who are rushing about town, who don't have time for fiddly tying systems or lots of buttons. So it really speaks to her central vision of making fashion which works for women and works for their lifestyle. Quite often there's a risk of people thinking of African fashion as singular and that's absolutely not true. Fashions from the continent are abundant, they're diverse and they're really multifaceted. So it's really great to have these examples from Nanaji's wardrobe that speak to the abundance on the continent and to the variety of fashion that we all know to be true.